Jarrett Mullenbrook is a Kansas City artist whose work takes various forms. You might remember his public art piece called Float, where he placed hammocks out on the green space behind Bartel Hall. And though you might not realize it as you drive past them, pieces of a project he calls Haven are another way he's devised to get you thinking. Thinking about these and their dwindling numbers around the world, Haven is designed to be a nationwide network of a thousand working beehive sculptures. Producer videographer Justin Bond has more on this artist whose motto might be simplicity is complexity resolved. I have what I would call a transdisciplinary practice. I move between mediums, inspirations, purposes, reasons. I don't tend to question why I want to make something. I just make it, and then I kind of figure out how it fits together with other things that I've made later. In the different way that works manifest themselves in my studio, some are just of the moment assemblages, purely visually aesthetic or symbolic. Haven is the first project in what I think will be a lifelong uh, work of mine, uh, which I call the Deep Ecology Project. Haven has a functionality, the conventional aesthetics of the work, what it's made of, how it looks, those are all important. But what it comes down to is what the piece says, what the piece is communicating, and how its functionality is an important part of that. So I'm an artist and a third generation beekeeper and I grew up around bees and um, there's been a big change in beekeeping practices that I felt I could address with this project. As a sculptor and a public artist, I fused those two interests together and created this project. So the hive's pretty heavy. It's filled with honeycomb and honey. Bees like their hive entrance to face south or southeast. So every site where Haven is installed, you'll notice that it'll be facing southeast. In order to make it as easy as possible to install, the only tool you need is one wrench, powerful magnets, that are embedded in these panels, let them snap right together. Around 100 years ago, Brancusi said, simplicity is complexity resolved. And the pollinator issue, uh, the decline in the honeybees, and the threats that face all the pollinators right now is extremely complex. So what I wanted to do was to create something which was as elegant and simple as possible. It has the potential to give bees what they need, and it has the potential to act as a tool to give us what we need to understand better what's happening. With the, the decimation of the population right now, it's very important for us to look at what's happening in the wild and what keys there might be to these survivor bees. Um, if we've lost 80 to 90% of bees in the wild, these 10 to 20% that are still living, to me, are really important. Honeybees are responsible for pollinating a third of the food that we eat. If the bees go, we lose that food, and that has profound ripple effects, and uh, this is a pretty important food security issue. Part of the process of installing these hives is also in catching the wild honeybees, which I do in the spring. If it were a bigger branch, I would just pound the branch or shake it and have the bees fall into the bucket. I'm going to just try to take the whole branch that the bees are on. Um, that's why I'm removing as much of it as possible. Then I'll just put the little piece of the branch in the bucket and take it with me. Then when I install the bees in the hive, I'll take the branch out. Oh, didn't go quite as smoothly as I hoped. That's why I put the tarp down. The queen is somewhere in this mess of bees, and we hope that she's in the bucket. If she's not and she's on the, the tarp, the bees will join her. 
If she's in the bucket, the bees will join her in there. These bees are going to be going into a haven hive at a private residence. Here in Kansas City, I have haven hives in um, both public and private locations. We have hives at Hyde Park, um, the DST Garden at 18 Broadway, uh, Kaufman Memorial Garden, the Kaufman Foundation, Johnson County Community College, Nerman Museum's collection, which will also be on the Johnson County Community College campus. At each haven site, uh, there is a title plaque with a QR code. Uh, the title plaque describes to park visitors what they're looking at. The QR code takes them to a website with a survey page. The website gives them more in-depth information as to what's happening to the honeybees and what this project is all about. And the survey page allows them to make their own observations and upload that information to the website to help crowdsource this data gathering. It allows visitors to engage with the project at any level they want. Uh, can even serve as a tool for educators that want to take a class of kids out to see what's going on and learn about why pollinators are important. These are the bees that are spreading the scent to tell all the other bees that this is the place to come. The queen is in here, come and join us. If you sit here for a while, eventually you'll just see all the bees in the air and the tarp kind of come inside and join them in the bucket. The bees pretty much just want to ignore us and we're not really on their radar. What they're looking for are flowers. They are not prone to attacking and uh, chasing down people. Couldn't talk with the bee on my lip. It was important to make the hive in a way that uh, would allow visitors to any urban park feel comfortable in its proximity. At this height, at 16 feet, this is a way for us to be able to integrate them into our urban and suburban environments and make them part of our uh, ecosystem. Public realm uh, is a great place to play with art and uh, this project gives me a great chance to step out of the gallery walls, to step out of the institution, to interface with my art and uh, a general public directly. And to me, that's become a very valuable part of my practice. 